Hello everyone, welcome to part four of my Green Lantern collection. Uh, let's just dive right in. Ion, this is where um, Kyle Rayner, I believe, trains the new Ion, who is so damn yacht. Um, I actually really like this character. He was a Daxamite, which is like a neighboring... Um, Daxum was a neighboring planet to Krypton. And they get the, like the same... Super strength, speed, heat vision, all that with the uh, yellow sun. But their weakness is lead. It's actually deadly to them. Um, he was a pretty cool character, especially in the Green Lantern core books. Um, yeah, honestly, I don't really have much to say about him. He was really cool. Ion, oh wait. This is Tales of the Sinestro core, my bad. This is Ion number one. This is when Kyle Rayner is Ion again. Um, he was Ion once in... The main 90s Green Lantern series. This, he... Is it, he gets his powers, I think, from Jade. I think she's dying. That was his girlfriend, then ex-girlfriend. She has the natural uh, star heart, which is like Green Lantern powers, but she doesn't have a ring. It's just like part of who she is. The art in this was kind of odd. Story was okay. Donna Troy, another Kyle girlfriend. Okay, now we get into the Green Lantern core books. I think, what, this miniseries research is written by Dave Gibbons and Jeff Johns and then Patrick Gleason, who, I, I liked Patrick Gleason. I really liked him on uh, Green Lantern core. Uh, then he did Spider-Man for a while, Amazing Spider-Man. I was really excited about that. Nothing too crazy in these stories. Um, this is the where Sinestro's daughter, is it Sorinik? Sorinik Sinestro, I believe, is her name. She becomes a Green Lantern. She's a doctor. Um, really cool bloody cover. Walk. Yeah, this is this is uh Sorinik, Sinestra daughter. And you also find out this uh I think it's supposed to be like a birthmark, but it kind of looks like a tattoo as well. This was Sinestra's way of uh chipping her. You know, people chip kids or uh dogs or animals. Um that's what he did so he could always find her. And that's her partner, sector partner, Iolande, who was actually in the Green Lantern animated series. Nestro, Kilowog versus Arkillo. This part of the Snestro War. This is the aftermath. Or maybe it's still going. Ion versus Superboy Prime. Really not sure how Ion lost that. Oh, this is a great. I think this. I believe this is the issue where, when Parallax is possessing Kyle during the Snestro Core War, this is what's going on in Kyle's head. And it's just a beautiful story. It's Parallax basically trying to feed on him going, you know, all your girlfriends die. We killed your mom. All this stuff, like you're weak, you're nothing, you're not Ion. And him, you know, again, because it's in his, I imagine kind of like Nightmare on Elm Street, like Freddy Krueger's dreamscape type thing. And he, you know, out of thin air because it's in his head, puts on a Green Lantern and goes, I know, and I don't have to be. Oh, it's, just such, it's such a great story, great uh, character moment for Kyle, just showing you what a true hero he is with or without power. Uh, the Alpha Lanterns were they're the police that police the Green Lantern Corps. Mongol, he takes over uh, the Snestro Corps for a bit. Beautiful covers on these. Again, these are really good stories. I felt like the series didn't really pick up until um, until the Sinestro Core War, and then but afterwards it got it was pretty interesting. It's 
Smasher, what a great villain, too. Sorry, fell out of order. This is another I need to I really need to get my all my Green Lantern books into Mylar's. Oh, this is uh Guy Gardner becomes a Red Lantern for the first time. Two copies of that. This is a great Great story. Um, he, Kyle Rayner sacrifices himself to take down a huge horde of Black Lanterns. And Guy thinks he died. And the Red uh, red Ring comes to him. And he just starts kicking all kinds of ass on of the Black Lanterns. I think this is where they cure him. Or maybe it's this where they cure him. I'm not sure. I don't know why I have a couple doubles of some of these. Cyborg Superman, he starts controlling the Alpha Lanterns. Because they are uh, part machine. Ah, oh, the Weaponer. This is a great story. Awesome cover right there. Uh, the War of the Green Lanterns. This was uh, this was the big story I read, I think, after I first read the Sinestro Corps War, because I was just buying any Green Lantern trade paperbacks that had Jeff John's name on it back in, you know, 2012 to 2015, somewhere in there. And this is where they all choose different rings. It's a really awesome story. Emerald Warriors. This is just like a tie-in series, basically. Uh, this was, I think, only 13 issues. I think these covers are done by J.G. Jones. I could be wrong, but that's what the cover cover artist looks like. Uh, great cover. I love Red Lantern covers. Uh, they're my favorite core. Uh, oh, I was like, oh, this is out of order. It's not. I just had Emerald Warriors in here before the New 52 Green Lantern Corps. Two issues of that, or two copies. This also had, like, a really good first half. I think, I don't know if, I don't think this made 52 issue. I think it made, like, 30. The first half was really strong, and then the second half just... Not not as strong. Oh, and here it is. Um, or continues. John Stewart kills a fellow Green Lantern because they are. That lantern is about to uh, reveal secrets to Oa in order to save his life. They're prisoners. They're being tortured. So guys, not having it, he <laughs> helps John destroy the Alpha Lantern Corps. And the Guardians just let it happen. Yeah, I think this, right? Wrath of the First Land. Once it started leading into this, the story, I just, I stopped caring about the story. Sorry, I don't have much to say about these. Wait, maybe it made it to 40 issues. Uh, clearly, it's more than 30. Batman variant. Two of those. Selfie variant. Godhead. I uh, hate this story. This was really cool, though. Black Lantern, John Stewart cover.
Yeah, I can never recommend Green Lantern in the series or the side series like these enough. They're just yeah, this is the final issue forty. There is bad, but there's more. There's more good than bad in this series. Well, Future's End, uh, the Godhead Special, Sinestro. This was a mini series, or not mini series, but like, um, it was only I want to say twenty issues. It was it wasn't ongoing, but it didn't last super long. This was also a really good series. This was like supposed to be like Sinestro uh, heading out and leaving, but this was also um, uh, his daughter becoming a Yellow Lantern. Some of these are just variants. I need to get the cover A's. Sure, might I think this is yeah? That's where he just starts sending Yellow Lantern rings to anyone. Lobo, this was a great crossover series with the New 52 Lobo. Black Adam. Neil Adams cover, that's really cool. Yeah, there's where she starts taking over Sornik. John Romita Jr. Fear his might. Future's End, Annual, Green Lantern, The Lost Army, this was a kind of a fun mini-series, it was near the end of the New 52, um, it was just like Guy, John, and Kilowog, and the rest of the core, all trying to get back to, uh, I guess like to their universe, Edge of Oblivion. And the last issue. All right, so that is long box number four. Um, I have one more long box to do. I actually made a mistake. I thought I had six long boxes. The one was just empty. Um, so I have one more long box to do, and then I start cracking into the four uh, CGC boxes. So stay tuned for those.